Welcome back to IGN Breakdown. My name is Jonathan Dornbush, IGN's resident Kingdom Hearts expert. If you haven't, make sure you check out the last episode of IGN Breakdown as we are trying to give you a full crash course in Kingdom Hearts so you are ready to play Kingdom Hearts 3. On this episode of IGN Breakdown, we're actually going to be diving into the gameplay specifically of Kingdom Hearts 3, but also how it had so much of its beginnings in the franchise's past. Now, let's figure out how you'll be able to play Kingdom Hearts 3 all on your own. So having had hands-on experience with Kingdom Hearts 3, there is a lot going on and a lot of ground to cover, and you may be confused as you first jump in of what's important to focus on, what's not important, but I want to start with essentially the basics. So essentially Kingdom Hearts is a real-time third-person action RPG, and what that means is you, playing as Sora, will be wielding your Keyblade, and you'll just basically be bashing the heck out of all the enemies you encounter. It's over! You'll have standard combos that you'll be able to chain using your Keyblade, and that's going to really be your main emphasis. But in addition to your Keyblade, you also have magic. Magic has been with Kingdom Hearts franchise since the beginning. Uh, in Kingdom Hearts 1, it actually functioned a little bit differently, but it's been evolving throughout time. And in Kingdom Hearts 3, you'll have a wide array of spells from returning ones like Fire, and Blizzard and Thunder, as well as Cure, but you'll also have new spells like Water. And interestingly, because of the way Kingdom Hearts 3 works, usually spells normally had three levels of power, so you start with Fire, you get Fyra, and then you get Fyraga. Uh, there's now even going to be a fourth tier for a lot of these spells, so you can unleash even crazier attacks. And what's really cool about magic in Kingdom Hearts 3 is that it's essentially going to be reactive to the environment around you. So, for example, in the Pirates of the Caribbean world, if you're fighting underwater and you use the spell water, it's going to behave a little differently than it does if you're just on land and summon water out of nowhere. Which is really cool, you'll be able to, for example, maybe slide along some ice in certain worlds. It's a really unique take and an evolution of magic as we know it in Kingdom Hearts. In addition to that, though, in Kingdom Hearts games, you normally have party members with you. When you're playing as Sora, you'll almost categorically probably have Donald and Goofy by your side in your party. Donald's focus really is on magic, whereas Goofy is more of an attack and defense sort of guy. So you basically have all of those grounds covered with them in your party. You can also naturally adjust Sora as you want. If you are more focused on action, you have abilities that you'll be able to get that will allow you to enhance your Keyblade abilities, whereas you may want to focus on your magic or on collecting items. You'll have all these abilities that you'll unlock as you level up that you'll be able to customize Sora as you see fit. But in addition to Donald and Goofy, as you're venturing to other Disney World, you actually get other party members. But as opposed to other Kingdom Hearts games where you had to swap out Donald and Goofy for your party members, you're just gonna get a bigger party. So for example, in the Toy Story Toy Box world, Buzz and Woody will fight alongside you. In the Frozen Arendelle world, you'll have Marshmallow with you. And in the Monsters, Inc. world, Sully and Mike will be fighting alongside you. So your party will be enhanced and you'll have a lot more going on. And that may make battles even more chaotic around you, but you really want to focus on Sora because you're not controlling any of those other party members. You don't need to worry about what they're up to, though you may need to heal them occasionally, so make sure to keep an eye on your health bars. So there are a lot more things you'll have to keep track of though when it comes to Sora. One of those things is a returning ability from past Kingdom Hearts games, and that's summons. So you'll have an arsenal of summons that you'll unlock as the adventure goes along. In previous Kingdom Hearts games, they were relatively simple. Uh, they came usually from characters who were either in Disney worlds you already visited or in worlds you hadn't been to at all. That's still the case in this game, as you'll see that Wreck-It Ralph is a summon, Simba is a summon, Ariel is a summon, and you'll get a few others, but they behave very uniquely this time around. So for example, they're all sort of based on elements or central ideas. With Ariel, for example, she essentially creates Sora into kind of a water-powered creature, and Sora, along with Ariel, is able to dip in and out of whatever surface you're on, which is really fun when you're in the Toy Story world and you're on a concrete street and you're just jumping in and out of that street. It's pretty fun. But you'll be able to do that in some of these giant water pools out of nowhere and essentially encase all of your enemies in water. When it comes to Wreck-It Ralph, you can summon him and he comes out of his 2D old school arcade game and into your real world. And when he's there, you're able to essentially place blocks from the Wreck-It Ralph game into the world and any enemies trapped within that field that you create, once you ignite all of them, they get hurt pretty badly. It's a pretty cool, unique take on summons, which have been a staple of the franchise, but they now have these beautiful accents to them, and they're just visually amazing to watch. And when it comes to Sora's Keyblade, there's even more that he can do with it this time around. 
So you'll unlock a different Keyblade from each of the different Disney worlds, and each of those has a different transformation it can do. These are pretty cool and pretty intense, and you can summon them pretty easily throughout combat. For example, with the Toy Story World Keyblade, you can essentially create it into a giant hammer. Uh, but it's not a real hammer, it's modeled after sort of a toy rubber hammer that you would hit enemies with. But you're able to whack that at enemies, you're able to get these really great area of effect attacks with it, and it changes up how you use that weapon. When it comes to the monster's ink keyblade, for example, that one can turn into a pair of twin yo-yos that essentially Sora can spin out at enemies. This allows for a wider area of crowd control, and it's a pretty cool take on instead of just whacking a single enemy with a keyblade, you can really take on dozens of them at a time. We actually spoke to the Kingdom Hearts 3 co-director Tai Yasue, and he was telling us that the reason for these transformations is to keep the tempo of combat up and really maintain this amazing pace to it. He never wanted players to get bored in the middle of combat and feel like they knew Sora's full arsenal all the way, and he really wanted to encourage players to experiment with all these different transformations. In addition to the Keyblade transformation, Sora can also wield what's called the Attraction Flow system. This is a brand new system to Kingdom Hearts 3, and it's essentially modeled off of rides in Disney parks. So you see a lot of familiar rides, but they are giant light shows of explosions and power that Sora can use to take on his enemies. So one of the Attraction Flow rides, for example, is a pirate ship heavily modeled after the pirate ship at a Disneyland park. This you essentially can rock backwards and forwards, causing enemies to get knocked up in its wake until you unleash one final attack. Oh, yeah. While some attraction flow options, like the pirate ship, are ones you can use throughout a level, some are very case specific. For example, in a Titan fight during the Mount Olympus world, the ride that you'll be able to use is a Big Thunder Railroad-esque ride that is only used in that battle. It will allow you to get a different vantage point on the enemy and essentially is the really only way you can take them out, plus it just looks really cool to do. Yasue actually told us that the inspiration for the look of them was the idea of a sort of Disney parade that would go on with the big lights and spectacles that you normally see in the park translated to the rides that you often see there. Of course, you'll need to be able to get around all of these worlds in the Kingdom Hearts 3 universe, and thankfully Sora is pretty agile this time around. There was actually a system in Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance, the 3DS game, that allowed you to ping pong all around these walls, you were able to run up walls, it was pretty useful to get around, but the system this time, it's a little more stripped down, but you are still going to be able to run up walls, jump off of walls to jump into a combat scenario, and you'll basically be a bit more agile than Sora has been in, for example, Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. So every Disney World will have its own gameplay gimmick that is suited to whatever the movie and that world's ideas are. But there are original Kingdom Hearts worlds, and one of them that we definitely know is returning is Twilight Town, which was first introduced in Kingdom Hearts 2. But Remy from Ratatouille has actually taken up residence in Twilight Town, and he, of course, is a chef. He'll want you to gather supplies for his recipe so he can cook up items for Sora and the gang. These items that will be needed are scattered all around the universe. So for example, if you're in the Caribbean swimming around, you might find some fish that he'll need for a certain recipe. It's a unique little thing that can add to the exploration of all these worlds, as there will be, of course, treasure chests for you to unlock and explore and get new items in each of these worlds. Just imagine the yummy stuff little chef will whip up with this. <laughs> but what's even cooler this time around are Kingdom Hearts 3's Hidden Mickeys. So Hidden Mickeys are a pretty common thing in Disney parks. They're Mickey's head and his two ears. These are hidden all throughout the Disney world, so you will want to take photos of them. And thankfully, Sora can take selfies in Kingdom Hearts 3. He has what's called the gummy phone, his cell phone in Kingdom Hearts 3, because he's got to call all his friends and stay in touch. Uh, that phone will also let him take selfies throughout the world, which you can do for fun photo ops, but also to find these hidden Mickeys. It's a cool new collectible that harkens back to the trinities that were in the original Kingdom Hearts that helped you unlock certain aspects of different worlds. Now, the Gummy Ship is also returning to Kingdom Hearts 3. The Gummy Ship has been part of Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 before, and it is not exactly the most loved part of the franchise, so Square Enix has actually tried to change it around quite a bit this time. In Kingdom Hearts 1, it was an on-rail shooter that just went forward, and essentially you were in a spaceship and you had to shoot down enemies as they came by you and collect items. You could customize your ship, you could add new guns to it, you could add better shields, or make it look however you wanted with the different Gummy blocks. But that was about it, and it wasn't the most entertaining, unique, or exciting space shooter. In Kingdom Hearts 2, they tried to evolve it. It was still on rails, but the camera would swivel around to give you different shots of action, and the enemy types looked a lot more vibrant and detailed. This time around in Kingdom Hearts 3, the gummy ship is an open space 
360 degree exploration. So you're essentially gonna be in the gummy ship and you can get from world to world, but you can also explore the far reaches of space and see what's out there. Now, this is how you will find different gummy blocks and different blueprints so you can make different ships. It hopefully will change up the gummy ship flow, which has never been my personal favorite part of the Kingdom Hearts games, but the idea that you're gonna be able to explore space to find all these hidden treasures, I really like that because exploration has been sort of a key tenant of Kingdom Hearts, but it's wavered in its importance in each entry. And this time around, it seems to be really important because every Kingdom Hearts 3 world is huge. Rather than going for a quantity of worlds, they're going for the quality and the size of these worlds. So Kingdom Hearts 3's Toy Box world, for example, is a huge, giant toy store. It has multiple levels that you'll be able to explore, and it's this huge open area that Sora, Donald, and Goofy can navigate. It's a much larger space than almost any Kingdom Hearts world before it, and the idea that worlds like this, Arendelle's giant, beautiful snowy hills, and things like San Francisco skyline will be open for you to explore is hugely exciting in a franchise that is so good at hiding things in its every little nook and cranny, especially now that there are hidden Mickeys to find. So hopefully that gives you a better sense of the gameplay you'll be encountering in Kingdom Hearts 3. Of course, if you're having difficulty, don't feel bad about it. Feel free to bump it down to easy if you really just want to explore these Disney worlds and see the story through to the end. But of course, if you're enjoying the challenge, feel free to bump it up to proud. Proud mode is essentially hard mode in Kingdom Hearts, and it's sort of a rite of passage for fans to be able to complete each game on proud mode. But hopefully that, in addition to everything else we've discussed here on IGN Breakdown, has given you an idea of everything you need to know for Kingdom Hearts so you can jump into Kingdom Hearts 3 all on your own. I hope you enjoy the game, and as always, may your heart be your guiding key.